until a year ago, he didn't exist. John Harrison was a fiction created the moment I was awoken by your Admiral Marcus to help him advance his cause. A smokescreen to conceal my true identity. My name is Khan. <laughs> Hello, everyone, and welcome back to Cinematic Adventures. Don't forget, if you guys are listening to us on the go, you can find us on Podbean, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, iHeartRadio, basically anywhere you get your podcasts. If you guys are watching us on YouTube, make sure you guys leave a like, comment, and subscribe down below for more content. As always, I'm one of your hosts, Paul. With me via the Zoom studio is Sean. Sean, how are you today? I am just great, Paul. How are you? I'm doing all right. It's been a while. It's been a while. It's been a minute. It's, yeah. Sorry about that. <laughs> oh, it's okay. But hey, what are you going to do about it? It's life. It is life. It is. But here we are. We're back and we're finally going to be continuing our Star Trek discussion. Finally. <laughs> So we uh, we talked about the original or the remake of Star Trek a few weeks ago, and now we're back to talk about not only Star Trek Into Darkness, but also Star Trek Beyond. Because after you go into darkness, you, you you have to go beyond, I guess. Yeah, that Beyond section is tricky. Yeah, yeah you know, Bed Bath and Beyond. Rest in peace. Everything's closing now. <laughs> it's so sad. Like Radio Shack and Best Buy in the in the heavens of. That's probably still around. What are you talking about? Oh, I figured it was on its way out too, because the last time I went there, I got charged so much money. I figured that they were dying. And, you know, I also definitely meant to say Radio Shack, but here we are. Well, you said Radio Shack, but then you said Best Buy. I'm like, hey. I know, I panicked. I panicked. I just, I just added everything together. So here we are. But let's talk about some Star Trek before we get even more off topic, which is definitely par for the course with us. If you guys are a new listener or a new viewer, sorry, this is what, the way that it goes at this point. Uh, accept it accept it move on be be all that whatever but anyway all right so let's talk about first star trek into darkness released on april 23rd 2013 in city and then may 15th 2020 2013 in the united states on a budget of 185 million dollars to about 190 it pulled away 467.4 million dollars this took a long time to be made Oh, yeah, this one, a little bit longer than it probably should have. When was the first one? 2009? 2008 or 2009. Yeah, but it was like a solid four years plus between both movies. You know, it wasn't the traditional like, oh, movie was a hit? Okay, two years later, here's the sequel. I don't know why they just, they couldn't come up with a script in the, right away, and it just took a while for them to find the storyline they wanted to do. Which is funny because they just copy and pasted from another movie, which we're going to talk about in a second. So really quick, full disclosure, total spoilers abounds for both these movies. I will be honest, I've seen Star Trek Into Darkness several times, but Star Trek Beyond, I've only seen in its entirety when we saw it in the theaters. I had no real desire after the words to watch it. What were your thoughts on Into Darkness versus Beyond? Versus? Totally two, two different movies. Into Darkness was the definite continuation of the first Star Trek film. It was very similar. It's directed by J.J. Abrams. So there's all this stuff that matches exactly what we got in the first one. Mm. Beyond Beyond felt honestly like a glorified episode of Star Trek. But that's not a dig. That's yeah, not a I know. dig. I was about to say, is that a good um, thing or a bad thing? But it's, it, it's different. It's a different way of doing the movie. It just didn't feel... It, it felt like watching the 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 patrick stewart star trek movies like generations contact or or even the last one nemesis it just felt like a glorified tv movie episode like nothing spectacular it's 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 meant for the star trek fans it it, it didn't i don't think it spoke to the mass audience like the first two did i think it was more geared at the full on star trekkers fan base trek er trek er <laughs> so it's, I like it. it's it's not a bad movie no not not even a little it, bit it's um, just not it doesn't live up to i think the first one or even this one that we're going to talk about in a minute very for very forgettable like i i remember it but like i remember some of the cool stuff but i also like it, i wasn't sure i agree like the second movie, Star Trek Into Darkness, definitely felt like a sequel to Star Trek. It was, here's the movie, and then here, Star Trek Into Darkness has, the plot is a is from direct 
cause from the first movie. Like the things that happen in the first movie are the reason that the second movie happens the way that it does. And we have established that they are in their own separate timeline. They're, you know, they're doing their own thing, which is totally fine. And they still managed to, this movie managed to annoy Star Trek fans and also have like, have Star Trek fans enjoy it. Cause obviously it made, it made money. Like it did a great yeah. job um, for Star Trek. Star Trek used to be a very, I don't want to say niche audience, but it was a very specific audience, right? Mm -hmm. um, we grew up, Sean and I, for the, for those of you guys who don't know, we grew up in the 90s for the most part, um, in the early 2000s. And it was a, during a time where being like a nerd was not something that people flaunted. And they were made fun of for it. Like you you watch like the Trekker or the Trekkie documentary, like, you know, even watching the Big Bang Theory, the whole joke of the Big Bang Theory for the first like three quarters of the season is, haha, they're nerds because they like nerd stuff. Like that was the joke. So yeah. Star Trek definitely had a very select audience. I, you know, you can argue till you're blue in the face or green in the face if you're an alien in this world, but then, you know, James T. Kirk might make, make a pass at you because he likes those green aliens, but you can argue which fan base is bigger, which one's more passionate, Star Trek versus Star Wars, and you'll be there for days. Like there's no, oh, cool. there's no winning in that regards. I think now I, I, I could, I could say you and me are on neither. Like we're not diehards of either franchise. We are just very solid fans of both franchises and we mm -hmm. understand the, the good qualities of both and you know the not so great qualities of both so. yeah and i i like to think that we've gotten to a point where it's a lot more socially acceptable to just be like hey i like both and that's fine yeah, absolutely i mean but there's still people out there who don't like star wars because they're full-on star trek fans and i'm sure there's people out there who don't like star trek because they're full-on star wars fans but you know, it, whatever. It is what it is. It is what it is. So let's jump into the first movie. We're going to spend about 10, 15 minutes on each movie because the I feel like talking about the first one, you had to talk about a lot more, especially the cast in itself. But mm -hmm. you know, these ones, the cast is pretty much like it, it's there. We've already established who they are. So We've already established it. There are a few additions, obviously. Alice Eve, who plays a, a – at, at first, you don't know exactly who she is. She's just sort of this new doctor on the Enterprise – you know, a little mysterious. She's a new addition. Peter Weller playing a, I think he's a general, he a commander or, or whatever. He's like kind of like the man in charge of Starfleet. He's like the big kahuna of Starfleet. Uh, so, Admiral, thank you. Mm -hmm. And obviously the biggest casting addition was Benedict Cumberbatch. And this is what, 2013. So this is before Doctor Strange. So this is before he joins the MCU. He's pretty much only known for Sherlock at, by, at this time and of maybe a couple other movies that he had done, but it, it was the worst kept secret that he was playing Khan. Oh my God. Like they still tried to make I mean, it seem like it was a big secret too, which is even funnier. It was, it was like, yeah, it was, everyone knew. It was like, oh, he's playing Khan. It is just, it had, it's, it's gotta be Khan. Mm -hmm. You know, there's no other, who else would this guy play? So it was, it was in that sense, it kind of, I wouldn't say it was a letdown, but you knew it was coming. So well, that, it's, it's funny when they finally do the big reveal, like, yeah, my name is Khan. Everybody's like, like the whole, I remember like the, the theater for the most part was like, oh, cool. I mean, at least that's yeah. what I remember. Like nobody was like, boo, but apparently but we, did, we were with, we were with our friend Kelly at the time and she's a diehard Star Trek fan. And I do remember her a little pissed off. She was like, oh, come on, really? Like, do you gotta, you gotta do this. Okay. But yeah. you know, that it was not a, like, it was not. Captain America picking up with the hammer in, in Endgame. Endgame. Yeah. It was not that reaction. It was a sort of, oh, okay, cool. We kind of knew that was going to happen. Yeah, way awesome. Yeah. Uh, so I, it, I still think it's a fun moment. And yeah. like, you know, we as the, as the audience are like, oh my God. And Kirk's just like, who? Who, who are you? Like, <laughs> pretty well, much. We do find out that the reason Khan is in this timeline at this point is because after the destruction of Vulcan, the Starfleet started scouring other corners of the galaxy, trying to find ways to better defend themselves because they were outclassed by technology far superior. And mm -hmm. they come across Khan's ship, revived just him. And there's what, like 62 or something like yeah. that? Others that are all cryogenically frozen, I want to say, something like that. I don't remember so, exactly how many people. But it, okay, I believe it's like in the 60s or something like that. It's enough for a little like enterprise of people, but nothing. 
It's not like thousands or anything like that. Hmm. Uh, yeah, I'm trying to figure it out. But anyway, so we get introduced to him, and the, the opening scene's pretty intense. Yeah. It's, with the library. Yeah, it's the it's so like you it's it's a it's an England Starfleet officer, obviously has a daughter who is dying. Mm-hmm. And you just you're introduced to Khan. He's just he comes from behind the guy and he goes, I can save your daughter if you do something for me. So the guy blows up the library and that's how you're introduced to the con to at the time his name is john harrison that's the name they give him and that's that what they, that's how they credited him as too like, yep. they're like it's, oh he's playing a him. brand new character named john mm-hmm. and you immediately cut to the starfleet command you know trying to figure out what is his end game what is he doing do they have to worry about him attacking you know and the thing in the movie is the Enterprise crew is trying to, I think they're supposed to, they're not supposed to show their ship to this alien race. And they end like up awesome. showing the ship and it causes all big things. Spock obviously does what he does, tells the truth. And Kirk is stripped of the command of the Enterprise. Oh, I said the Klingons. You're talking about in the beginning. Very beginning. Yeah. yeah, the very beginning. But a lot of this movie happens because of that first, the two Big points of the opening scene are establishing Khan and the terrorist attack that leads to the to the to the following events with you know Starfleet's reaction and the torpedoes. Like Khan's smart and his plan is very yeah. smart too. And then the secondary is they were trying to save a planet from a, an erupting volcano and they were seen, which is against their prime directive. So Kirk gets demoted, Spock gets moved, and it's it's a it's an interesting dynamic seeing the two of them, how long they've been working together, and mm-hmm. just where they are now. Yeah. You can see that they like they they somewhat trust each other, but there's just they're still not at that obviously at the level we know those two characters to be obviously from the show and from the later movies. So I, I really like that dynamic because it's not you know it's not immediately like oh we are now in the normal Kirk and Spock mode. No no they still got some working out to do. Yeah. Terms of, you know trusting each other and working together and you know we come to the. We have Christopher Pike returns, played by Bruce Greenwood, and he takes over the command of the Enterprise. And him and Kirk officer. go to this meeting of all of the all the uh, all the crews, and that's where they're ambushed by John Harrison. And because their their code uh, dictates that during a terrorist attack, all captains and people like of importance meet in this one spot, and they get wrecked. I always forget that Starfleet is not, and it's like a whole big thing. They're not a military organization. So they don't, they treat it like pseudo military, but they are just, they're space explorers first and foremost. So, you know, obviously Kirk wants revenge because Admiral Pike dies in the process and it leads to them going to the Klingon homeworld where they're not supposed to go. And I think the Klingons looked fantastic. Yeah, no, they They were very well. I mean, say what you will, these movies have fantastic makeup and CGI. They do a very good job blending the two. Absolutely. But we Uh get, you know... Khan gets captured, reveals who he is, and it's it's an interesting dynamic with the two of them working. I wonder if if Kirk hadn't tried to betray Khan, do you think it still would have gone the same way? Probably, because that's just the way those characters were designed to go. But yeah, that's a great question. And that was my one gripe with the movie was Spock calling Spock to find out about Khan. Yeah, kind of oh. cheating, kind of cheating a little bit. I was like, it, I, I get it, but it just kind of, I was like, figure it out yourself. It was like, that's it was when we get to this Zoom call. Point. Yeah. And that's when we get to the point of, oh, are they going to just copy the ending of Wrath of Khan? Are they going to do, and, and, you, and we all knew it like right away. Like they really were dropping hints that certain things can only happen if you do this, you do that. Mm-hmm. And all of us looking at each other going like, are they just going to? Are they just going to do this? Really? They're, they're, but of course, they flip it. And instead of Spock sacrificing himself, as in Wrath of Khan, Kirk sacrificed himself. Um, and we get the famous uh, Khan yell, but this time from Spock. Mm-hmm. So it, was, it, was, it was good, but it just felt like it could have been done better. That's fair. I mean, you know, it's, I it's a little... 
I did like the fight between Spock and Khan. That was a great fight. It was hand-to-hand combat. It was very, very good. And Spock using some of his, like, he uses the Vulcan nerve pinch. And that's a great shot when he catches uh, Khan. And Khan's, like, still resisting it, though. But, like, you can tell it, it's not a pleasant experience. Yeah. But they managed... And I forgot the, the Tribbles are, are a part of the storyline. And they, of course you know, our factor and how uh, Bones discovers that Khan's blood is like a regenerator has regenerated has regeneration powers. And that's how Kirk is brought back to life. Which Unlike I think would be Khan, yeah. That was not a storyline. No. Uh it was definitely some weak writing and a bit of a cop out. I feel like they could have done better. But also speaking of, of bad writing and things that especially have not aged well, there is this random shot of Alice Eve in her underwear. Yeah, and yeah I remember that. That, that okay. shot, even still to this day, still gets a lot of flack for being completely gratuitous to the point where I'm not going to put a clip of it in right here. I might just put a clip of, you know, Chris Pine turning away, but we'll see. Yeah, there, that's nobody really understood where why it was there. It was, no, it was there was no there was no absolute point to that shot at all. It, it was, was like just... my, it was like Michael Bay directed one scene. I'm surprised it there wasn't. Was like that, it was it was like the scene in the airplane, like just it was a spoof of like you know the gratuitous, you know shots, but it was just like it didn't uh, it didn't work. It did not land. Okay, but you know the movie does end on a happy note. It does end very strange, where they're like, "I'm going to recite the captain's oath," and it's like space, the final frontier. These are the journeys of the U.S. Wait, what? <laughs> it's tailor made to each ship. That's kind of weird. But yeah. uh, Star City rating for Star Trek Into Darkness. Uh, I give it a three. Give it a three. That's solid. I think we gave the first one like a four ish. We yeah. That. yeah. This this is a three to a three and a half. Like it is, it's a solid sequel. But in all honesty, it's it's predictable. Especially if you if you figured out the con thing going into this movie, this movie was super like I did like you know obviously and Peter Weller is gonna be the bad guy. Of course he's gonna be the bad but guy. That's that's the thing. And it was like you had two bad guys because they really were like. Is Khan bad in this? Is he good? We don't know. He can work with them, but he also has his own motives. And all of a sudden, then obviously Marcus, played by Peter Weller, is the obvious bad guy because he wants to like kill all these innocent people that Khan is with. Mm -hmm. You know, no matter where Khan is, these people are not, you know, are innocent and they're getting like shot off like missiles and stuff like that. So yeah, it was like, and then obviously Khan ends up killing. Marcus and in a pretty you know brutal way right in front of his daughter which was a little oh uh, yeah over the top but uh, but then obviously yeah once the admiral's dead you Khan is you know still his normal self and he now becomes the bad guy again with the with Spock you know chasing after him and Spock you know it takes a hurrah to to stop him from killing him right so Spock would have, Spock would have no. destroyed him Solid movie. I do like some of the expectation subversion that they did, though, with they made a lot of those scenes seem like it was the Enterprise crashing into Earth and stuff like that. And, yeah, and yeah, that. I remember that. So the, the trailers did a better job promoting this movie. And also some of the posters were really good. I remember, I think Iron Man 3 came out around the same time. And there uh, were posters of both of Iron Man falling and like the Enterprise falling. So people were like making jokes about the comparison. But all right. I, I did I, I did like how this movie ends where it's now this is where Star Trek begins. This is where they are officially now the crew of the Enterprise. They're going on their five year mission. That obviously is what the show is. Mm -hmm. So I like that. And then, you know, as you know, we, we come into Star Trek Beyond now. Yeah, Star Trek Beyond. It's there. It exists. Directed by Justin Lin, so he's no slouch as a director. I mean, we like Justin Lin, you know, the movies he's done, the, the, the few Fast and the Furious movies he directed, uh, some of his horror movies that he directed. You know, so the guy the guy is good. I just, I think the script is just not up to par. But I also don't know if they were really intending to make, a, like, a big, crazy movie like the first two were. I, I really think they probably thought, let's just make, you know... An hour and 45 minute episode of Star of the Trek. Show. And I think for the most part, it was a smarter idea yeah. to a point. It was definitely a fun movie. They they really leaned hard on some of the things like having the BC Boys music in it. And yeah. I like that where because it, it harkens back to the first movie where they use it when Kirk is a kid. Yeah. I mean, so this movie was a budget of 185, so which is a little bit mm -hmm. higher than the than the previous one, if memory serves correct. I know I said yeah. it, but I totally forgot it. And then no, it made the 300, 343 million. So I mean it, it didn't double its budget, but it, it made money. You know, it wasn't 
I mean, I, I don't think it was enough for the studio to be like, let's immediately start making another one. But also, yeah. I, I think a factor in it was all the actors were, were, were obviously doing other projects. I mean, Zoe Saldana, you know, was doing a bunch of different things. Obviously, I think it, when this 2016, so Guardians had already come out. So she was probably either filming Guardians 2 or, or something like that. John Cho, Simon Pegg. I mean, they're, these guys, I mean, they're all busy with other projects. Mm -hmm. So I, I think and, that was a factor. And unfortunately, we had, you know, two, two passings around the same time. Leonard Nimoy died a, a year before the film came out. And Anton Yelkin, this was his final film appearance. Yeah, this was after he passed away, I believe. Because I think, yeah, I mean, we knew it as we were watching the movie that he had already passed. Because this came out, released July 22nd, 2016. And my computer doesn't want to work. So he passed away on June 19th, 2016. So he passed away a month before the movie was released. That's so sad. It was, it was fresh off of his passing that the movie came out. Oh, yeah, what a shame. Like, I, I really liked him. And I know we talked about it. But so th this movie was also famous in showing that uh, Sulu was gay. Like, that was a whole big thing. And people freaked out about it. Like, I know George Takai actually was like a little like against it. He was like, there's no need like who cares so yeah. it, it was an interesting but it was like the first like gay kiss in the star trek franchise and it's like a quick two seconds like who god people get crazy but the movie is you know they introduce the bad guy as who is it it's idris elba as captain balthazar edison slash crawl i did like the like the the like the flock of bad guys that get sent around like the the little machine are they machines yeah and it's it it was a like they're fun visually, but it also reminds me way too much of Big Hero Six with the, the nanobots. Oh man, I did not think of that. That's actually pretty good. But in all honesty, like I I hate to say it, I'm I'm reading through the plot. And I'm like I really don't remember too much of this. No, it's just that the antagonist is they were like all former enter uh, the former Starfleet. Um, right. You know, and they were lost in space and like they just kind of had to fend for themselves and they, you know, were, I don't know if they were mutated or um, something happened to them that they all became, you know, looking like aliens because at the end, like as they're dying, they're all returning to human form. Yeah, which is interesting. Like, I, I thought it was a good idea and they... Like the visuals were really good, and obviously Idris Elba, he's fantastic. I can watch him in almost anything. Yeah, he is very. I, I do enjoy um, Idris Elba a lot. And then Sofia Boutella, this was like um, right after Wanted, mm -hmm. when she was starting to make her big push. I think around the time the Mummy and all that, that was yeah. out. So she was not, not really Wanted. You're talking about Kingsman. Kingsman, thank you. Sorry, Kingsman, first Kingsman, and then also <laughs> that, uh, Atomic Blonde. I believe she was in as well. Oh yeah, that was a that was a fun movie. So she was really big at the time, and she plays Jayla, an alien scavenger. And uh, yeah, she I thought she was really good. She added a little to the storyline. Her and uh, Scotty had a good uh, kind of rapport between the two of them. Yeah, they do a good job in these movies with with building characters. Scotty uh, Simon Pegg gets a lot of time in Star Trek Into Darkness, and again, yes. like he they give him a lot. Obviously, like still Simon Pegg was one of the bigger actors. Um, in this franchise, you know, Zachary Quinto was was still hot of here, uh, hot off of Heroes, but you know, and Chris Pine was Chris Pine. Like he's still Chris Pine's still fantastic. I need to watch Dungeons and Dragons. I still haven't seen it. And uh, Zachary Quinto, I mean, he really hasn't done anything movie wise. Really, he's been mainly stage and television actor. Still very good actor, but he really never. I wouldn't say he really ever you know, traded in the success of this Star Trek and really took on, he didn't do any other big, big budget stuff. Mm -hmm. He does anything that's very small, um, like I said, television or, you know, stage work and stuff like that. Right. Uh, uh, he did the slap. You remember that one? The slap? I do. It was like a, it was, it was a mini series. It wasn't even a TV. It was a TV <laughs> He's show. the one that slaps the kid. Oh, there you go. I remember the, tra I remember the commercials. But I was like, I don't want to watch this. I'm good. You know, but what is this? Uh, Melissa Roxborough's in uh, this. I didn't know that. From Manifest. So I didn't know she was in this movie. I forgot who she was. Yeah, I haven't, I haven't watched it since, but whatever. 
But I mean, yeah. honest to God, if, if if with this script and J.J. Abrams behind the camera, I don't think the movie would have been any different. No, no, I think the, uh, like the script, the script isn't necessarily the problem, and neither is the direction. Anything is the problem. I just think it was a general decision on what the type of movie they wanted to make. It, I could, I could almost see this movie being the second movie, like in this in this franchise. I could totally yeah. see that. Or this could have even been just its own standalone thing, which pretty much it was. Star City rating for it? Two and a half. Uh, yeah, I can get, I can get behind that. Like it, that's totally average. It's not necessarily like you know, bad, but it's just not, yeah. it's not something I ever remember. I mean, I'll be honest, like I could sit down and watch it right now, but then I wouldn't watch it again for another probably eight, 10 years. It's, yeah. You know, it's, it's a movie you'll watch once in a while, blue moon, you know, if you're in a Star Trek groove, watch it. It's worth watching. It's better than, you know, a couple of the Patrick Stewart ones. I think it's even better than some of the Shatner movies. I mean, it's not, you know, it's not horrible. It's just hmm. not the greatest. All right. So, well, I, but, I, any other I mean, final thoughts on this? I, on, I mean, there, there's no real news about what's happening with the fourth one. They keep talking about there's different directors. I know Simon Kinberg was on was talking about it. You know, they they wanted to maybe do another origin story. You know, then the question was Anton Yelkin passed away. Do we recast? Like there there are a lot of factors. It is confirmed that one's coming out. Like that that is. You know, wanted to do a, a Star Trek movie. They're talking about Chris Hemsworth reprising his role of George Kirk, which, you know, it's, yeah, I, I think we've passed our time. If you're going to do another movie, I don't even know what you would do. Do you reboot the Next Generation cast, or do you just come up with something totally original? Like, Yeah, yeah. I can see you doing Next point. Generation at some point, but it's just then who are you going to cast as Jean-Luc Picard? I mean, you can find somebody. I mean, you know, story looks exactly the same as he did 30 years ago. Yeah, if they if they really want to double down on on doing what they did with Spock, it would be John Luke would be the obvious choice. But I'm I'm curious, like I'm I'm going through my head. So you know, what? we'll even ask that if they were to reboot Star Trek: The Next Generation in the same way they did this the past Star Trek, who would you imagine as some of the cast members? So if you guys are watching on YouTube, leave a comment down below and see who you who your dream casting would be for a remake of Star Trek. The next generation as a film. Uh, I asked Chris Pratt as, as Jonathan Frakes. Oh, as Stryker. Riker. Riker, yeah, that'd be okay. Yeah, kind of cast Finn Wolfhard as Will Wheaton. Oh, that'd be funny. But you know, oh, you know what the perfect one is? I'm gonna say it. Jim Parsons as Data. Okay, you're welcome. I thought you were gonna say Jim Parsons as Picard. <laughs> like, wait, what? Yeah. Oh, I, I don't know who you could get as Picard. That would be. I'm trying to think of bold actors, like actors who have worked with no hair. And I'm I'm blanking on who it could be. James be, McAvoy. Yeah, he can keep his accent. Holy crap! Good one. Thank you, thank you. I did not even put that much thought into this, so I'm actually pretty proud of myself. But yes, yeah, so leave a comment down below. Think, I don't think McAvoy would do that. And uh, you want to get tied up. down to another franchise? He plays a young John Luke Picard. Oh, that shit! That's right. Yep, there Playing you go. Patrick Stewart twice in his life. I think so that imagine is... imagine him and Fastbender as Kirk and or not Kirk, Picard and Riker. That'd be fun. All uh, right. Yes, yeah, so that is going to wrap us up for today. Unfortunately, no fan feedback Friday because we have been off for like two weeks unexpectedly. And here we are. We're glad that some of you guys, we have some brand new listeners, shockingly, and watchers and all that stuff. So if you guys want more of our content, you can check out our website, themisfitfaction.com. You'll find links to all of our shows. We are also on all the social media, Instagram, Twitter, TikTok. Just type in Cinematic Adventures or The Misfit Faction. Odds are you'll find some of our stuff. But that is, of course, going to wrap us up for today. As always, I'm Paul. I'm Sean. And we'll see you guys next time.